Hi, everybody, and welcome to episode 63 of Growing in God. Um, today's going to be a little bit different. Actually, it's going to be a lot different. So we're going to spend a few moments talking about um, just the, the scope of our next part of our study, and then uh, we'll actually start getting into it. So uh, what we've been doing um, are our narrative or expositional studies where we're just taking a book and going down the list and just reading verse by verse. Um, and I pray if you haven't been doing that, um, or weren't used to doing that before. I hope that that was helpful. So um, consult my list. We went over First Timothy. We did Second Peter. We talked about Micah. We did Psalm 119. And we just finished up Hebrews. And so if you missed any of those, um, those are archived on our YouTube channel. And there's playlists for each one of those. So you can actually watch all 62 episodes in a row um, should you choose or if you want to reference those or share those with other people. Um, they're there, and so you can watch them whenever. Uh, so I appreciate um, any and everybody who has participated in those. Um, these are here for you um, so that you can learn and grow in your relationship with God, hence the name, right? So what we're going to do today is we're going to change and we're going to go into um, what's called a topical study. And so that's where you pick a, a certain topic or a certain section, and then you look at different verses all across the Bible that relate to or support those topics. So um, this, this is going to be a little bit different flavor. Um, another thing that's going to be different, normally I put all of the verses on the screen um, so you can read along, and that's just to kind of help you stay focused and help you um, kind of follow along word by word. Uh, we're not going to do that, um, at least for right now, because um, of really wanting you to get into your Bible if you're not already there. So if you don't already have it, pause your video, go get your physical Bible. Maybe yours does or doesn't have duct tape holding it together. Um, you're going to need your physical Bible, um, so go ahead and, and pause the video and go grab that if you don't have it already. And so what we're going to talk about today is um, something that, that's very um, close to my heart, something that's very important to me. Um, if, if you've heard me speak or teach at all, um, you know that it, it's very important to me to know who God is, and it should be very important to you to know who God is. And so what we're going to be doing today is talking about his attributes. Um, and those just mean like characteristics of God. So we're going to explain all that as we get started in a couple of minutes. Um, but as we as we go through this, um, I do have kind of a disclaimer. Um, the, the slides in the study that we're going to be going over for the next several weeks um, actually are from a, a Wednesday night series that we did. So this was originally formatted um, to be done in a group setting. There's a lot of interactive stuff. Um, and so I had to edit a lot of that stuff out. Um, but there will be some times throughout this study where... Um, there'll, there'll be a general question, and I'm going to prompt you to pause your video, answer that question even just within yourself, or if you're watching um, with, with a friend or a family member, and you guys can kind of talk about that, and then unpause and then finish watching the video. So um, there, there, is no, there is no replacement uh, for coming together physically in a place, learning together, being able to interact and bounce ideas off of each other, have um, broad discussions, um, asking general questions, and then people can respond to those as the Lord leads. Um, unfortunately, we still can't do that right now because of social distancing. Uh, but as soon as those uh, restrictions are lifted and things go back to normal, whatever that's going to mean, um, we'll be stopping these videos and then um, doing in-person services. But until then, uh, we're going we're gonna to keep posting on here because we, we feel that you being able to get into the Word of God, understand the Word of God, and apply the Word of God into your life um, is one of the most important things that you can do after you get saved. So uh, let me go ahead and bring up, uh, we're going to have a PowerPoint slide. Let me get that on the screen. Gladonk. And make it big and pretty. We're going to be talking about the attributes of God. So now that we've done all the background stuff, um, we're ready to pray and get started. So if you join me in prayer, I'd really appreciate it. Uh, Father, we just thank you so much uh, for your grace and your truth and your love. We thank you for your son. We thank you for all the things that you have done for us, God. And so, Lord, as we get ready to start this study that's a little bit different style, Lord, um, that you would just help us to stay focused um, on you, Lord, and that we would really get to know you, um, know your characteristics, your attributes, Lord, because that makes all the difference in how we view life and how we live our lives. So I just pray that your Holy Spirit would help us to understand and apply what we learn, Lord, um, that it just wouldn't be head knowledge, but it would be heart knowledge, part of who we are as a Christian. Uh, Father, I just pray that you would help us to transition from uh, those narrative type studies, Lord, to this topical study. Um, help us to be able to stay focused, Lord, 
um, and do what we need to do as you lead us to, God. So, Father, help me and help everybody watching to do our best like we're doing it for you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, so I'm uh, talking about these attributes of God. And if you came to any Wednesday classes, you're going to recognize this puzzle. Um, just for, for point of reference, this, this study on the attributes of God was like our third section in what we call the Digging Deeper series, where we took some, some general foundational truths and really dug down into those and, and, and gleaned more out of those, those basic things that we know. Uh, because the, the word of God is, is so deep and so rich and so beautiful that when you, when you spend time, even on something that you may think is pretty simple, um, you actually can find out more. You find other verses that relate to it. And so that's one of the benefits of doing a topical study is that when you're looking at a particular topic, you're pulling verses from different places um, that support that and, and reinforce that idea. And then when you see where those verses came from, that gives you kind of a new level of understanding. So um, the reason I put this puzzle on the, on the screen because I think it's a good representation. Uh, no, this is not my house. I just cut this off the internet. Um, and, and when we talk about our, our knowledge of God, um, nobody knows everything, okay? Not, not even close. And so when, when we learn things, it's like getting a new puzzle piece and putting it into the bigger picture. So when we, when we talk about, um, oh, my cursor does show up. So when we talk about the outside edge, like if you ever do a puzzle um, by yourself, I don't know if you're a puzzle person, uh, we usually do those around like Thanksgiving and Christmas with the family. Um, the first thing you do is you get all your edge pieces, right? And you kind of figure out where they go and you make the border. And that's what would, we would call the, the foundational principles of Christianity, understanding um, who Jesus is, uh, what it means to be a sinner, what it takes to be saved. Um, now that you're saved, what is the expectation for you? And that, that's all kind of our, our outlined edge. Like those are, those are the boundaries of Christianity. And so when we start to put in these individual puzzle pieces, um, that's when we, we find, like, let's say this guy right here, let's say we learn about a verse that we didn't know about before. Well, when you find where that fits, wherever it would fit on this puzzle, um, not only do you integrate that information into your knowledge of God, um, but when it's put in the puzzle per se, um, you see how it kind of fits um, with the Bible as a whole, how it fits with who Jesus is, where, where it fits on, you know, the Trinity of the Godhead, all these different things. And, and so you're, you're kind of integrating information. And again, um, on this side of heaven, our puzzle will never be complete. We're never going to fully understand everything. Uh, there's no point where you're going to be like, ah, I know it all. I don't have to do any more studies. Um, that, just, that just won't happen. Um, so we're always building our puzzle as it were. And so there may be things uh, where you have certain puzzle pieces um, that, that you understand and can explain and you talk to someone else and, and they've never heard that topic or never um, like studied that. And so that's our opportunity to share with someone else and then vice versa, right? Like you talk to people that know things that you don't know. Um, and that's where we kind of um, share with each other and we grow with each other. So that's why, you know, an in-person, like a, a full class service is really the best way to do this. Um, but we'll just, we're going to do the best we can with what we have. Okay. So we want to build, no matter how many pieces you have in your puzzle, uh, maybe you don't have this many pieces on the inside. Maybe you don't even have like the edge done yet. And that's okay. Uh, because wherever you're at, we're going to be able to find some pieces to add to our full puzzle. Um, and even sometimes, um, even if you have a lot of pieces in here, uh, you'll be able to kind of connect them together, maybe in a way um, that you hadn't before. So like, for example, if you look um, at this middle section, uh, this person has several pieces put together, but they're not integrated into the side yet. They know that that piece is probably that piece there, uh, but it's not connected to everything. So even as a mature Christian, you may know certain things um, and not see how all that thing interconnects to all those other areas. Uh, so I spend a lot of time talking about that uh, because every time we learn, it should be integrated in something else that we know, related to something else that we know. And so the best way that we can do that um, is, is to learn about just flat out who God is um, and so when, when we talk about this, knowing who he is makes all the difference. Um, one, of the, one of the dangers that we do as Christians when we read our Bible is we say like, what's in here for me? What can I learn? Uh, what's going to benefit me? How can I live my life better? And that's not wrong to do that, uh, but that's not our primary focus as Christians. Uh, we want to focus on what the Bible says about God. Um, the Bible is about God first and foremost. Yes, there are things in there that tell us about ourselves. Yes, there are things in there that tell us that how we should live in light of our salvation. Absolutely, right? So anytime we're reading about people and events um, all throughout Old Testament, New Testament, those are really important, but those are not as important as who he is. Um, as, as I've shared a couple times before, um, you know, this 
when I started to study this and I had people share some of these, uh, some of these topics with me, uh, I want to tell you that this made the biggest impact in my early Christian life um, more, than, more than anything else. Uh, really, really getting to, to know who God is, not just as a concept or like as this like outside force and okay, well now how do I live my life? But when we've been brought into intimacy because of what Christ did on the cross for us, um, that helps us to understand who he is and who he has made us to be. And then what expectations I have for my life, even if I don't have all the specific answers to situations I'm going through. I know you've probably dealt with that where um, you get in a situation like, man, I'm not really sure like what I should do, or I don't know I have the specific answer. Uh, there's so many things, guys, that when you know who God is and his character and his nature, his attributes, that gives you a very good push in the right direction from how you should handle different situations and how we should trust him to get through those. Okay, so we're going we're gonna to always go back and reference that and talking about being in intimacy with God, like knowing him is going to make all the difference. Because if we just learn these things like in isolation and we don't relate them to who God is, who our Savior is, and what he's done for us, um, then, then you're going to have this big disconnect between what you know and how you live your life. We want those two things to be mashed together. So that's what, that's what our goal is going to be for this study. And as we study them, uh, we're going to study um, the, these different attributes, um, the, really the primary ones that, that most people would, would focus on. We're going to study them all individually, but in real life, you can't, you can't really separate those things. So we're going to talk about different aspects of God, but those aspects aren't in isolation. They're just part of, of who God is. And so you're going to see how that works in just a second when we go through this. So uh, before we even go any further, we need to know, well, well what the heck is an attribute, you know? Um, an attribute, just looking up general definition, quality or a feature regarded as a characteristic or, this, this is the part I like, an inherent part of someone or something. And so when we talk about inherent, that's like an, an integral, a foundational, um, something that you really can't change. It's kind of like who you are um, as a person, um, who you are in, in the situation you are in life, and, and those things really don't change um, based on what's going on around you. So one of the easiest ways for us to kind of um, understand that, we would normally do this in a pair setting, um, but we're going to do this individually. So I'm going to give you a short example, uh, then we're going to pause, you're going to pause your video um, and do this activity, and then when you're done, you're going to unpause. So uh, one of the best ways for us to start thinking about how attributes work um, is, is to think about ourselves, right? Because you know, we know ourselves pretty well, right? Uh, I know there's things that maybe a, a spouse or a friend may, may be able to see better about us. Um, but you, you generally can reference yourself. So uh, what I want you to do in just a second um, is I want you to think about attributes about yourself and then the implications of those attributes or what, what does that mean or what does that do, right? So for example, I'll, I'll give you a few from me. Um, I could say um, that I am I'm a husband, right? So the implication would mean I have a wife, right? Um, another attribute I could say, well, I'm, I'm a father and the implications, well, I, I, have, I have two beautiful children, right? Um, I can say that, that I am a son, right? Because I was born. I know my mom and my dad. And so that means I should honor my mother and father because I'm a son, right? And so while, while I'm naming those things individually, um, you can talk about Jeff as a dad. You can talk about Jeff as a husband. You can talk about um, Jeff likes college football or whatever, right? And we can talk about those things individually, but all of those individual things make me who God has created me to be. Okay, so what I want you to do is I want you uh, to pause your video and I want you to think about, try to think of about 10 or more attributes about yourself. And then because you have that attribute, what does that mean about you? So um, if you say I am employed, well, the implication is like, okay, well, I, I get up and I go to work or I work from home during these strange times. Um, and an attribute about yourself and then an implication. So go ahead and pause your video. I will patiently wait for you to get back. Okay, so now you're back and hopefully you're able to see some of those characteristics or attributes about yourself and then some of those implications. And so that kind of makes you who you are uh, because we don't all have the same attributes. We don't all have the same uh, personality or temperament. We don't all have the same season in our life as somebody else. Um, those of you who may have grandkids have a different um, view on life than, kid, than people who don't even have kids at all, much less grown kids. And so we can see that your attributes or your characteristics kind of make up who you are as a person. And so what we want to do is, is take that idea and we want to be able to apply that to God. So um, 
my screen is in the way. Can I move this guy? Yeah. All right, so I'll move it as I read. Um, so we're gonna look, I'll put it down here. Look at that, being flexible. Okay, so uh, we're gonna look at 16 attributes of God. Now there are more than 16 attributes, um, but these are really like, like the basic or the foundational ones. Um, other attributes can always kind of be related back to these. So these are like the big picture ones. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna read through, uh, we have 16 of these guys. I'm not gonna give definitions yet because that's what we're gonna do. Um, and what I want you to do is um, think about if you've ever heard these terms before, if you know any of these. Uh, so we're gonna talk about um, God's eternality or that God is eternal. Uh, we're gonna talk about God's goodness, that God is good. Uh, we're gonna talk about God's grace. Uh, we're gonna talk about his holiness or that he is holy. Uh, we're going to talk about his imminence, not eminence. That's a different word we'll get into, imminence. And then we're going to look, look at his immutability. Uh, we're going to be looking at his justice, which is also another way to talk about God's wrath. Uh, we're going to talk about God's love. We're going to talk about that God has mercy. Uh, we're going to get to uh, what I infamously refer to as the omnis, um, omnipotence, omnipresence, and omniscience. Those are all very important. Uh, we're going to talk about God's righteousness and how that's a little different from some of the other ones. Uh, we're going to talk about God's self-existence. We're going to talk about God's sovereignty. And we're going to talk about God's transcendence. So what I want you to do for a second is pause your video, and I want you to look through this list and see if you've heard any of these words before or if you know anything about any of these words. So go ahead and pause your video, and I will wait for you. Okay, so hopefully you had a couple of minutes to talk about if you've, if you've seen some of these words um, before, even if you don't know what they mean, like you, you've seen them when you're reading your Bible, you've seen them um, in different Bible studies, you've, you've heard other people say some of these words. And so when we learn about what these 16 things are, uh, what we're going to do is for each one, we're going to go through and we're going to do a definition for each of the words. And then we're going to look at a handful of verses that support that concept or that attribute about God. And so uh, once we get a good handle on what all 16 of these things mean, and then understanding how they play out in God's word, that's really important. Uh, but what's ultimately important is that once we understand these, we know that God is all of these. And when you combine even just like one or two of these things, you're like, whoa, like that's, that's pretty awesome that God would have you know, two or three of these. Uh, but he'll have all 16 of these things. And also when we, when we talk about this, uh, we know that we don't produce any of these things on our own strength, right? And so we're always going to be referring back to that, that some of these things are exclusive to God. Um, so we are not, just, just for example here, uh, we are not eternal. We don't live forever. But because of what Jesus did for us, God offers us eternal life moving forward. And we're going to see that God um, is eternal both ways in time. So um, there's some of these that we are able um, to participate in, like mercy. Um, apart from a relationship with God, you and I really don't show mercy. But when he gives us a new heart and a new spirit, um, we work on transforming and renewing our mind, uh, we are able to be merciful to other people. Again, that's, that's God's power imputed or given to us so that we can show. So we are not able to um, produce any of these things uh, but God will give us the ability to participate um, in some of those. So, for example, um, we'll never be self-existent. Uh, we did not create ourselves; God created us. Uh, so we don't get to we don't get to do this one. But we'll get to um, go over these individual things. So, um, if it looks like a lot, it is a lot. And so, for each thirty-minute video, we look at getting through um, at least one or two of these. Um, depending, some are a little longer and some are a little shorter. Um, but we'll be able to to go through this. And don't be overwhelmed because once you get a good handle on these, um, these will really help um, understand who God is and how we're supposed to live. So let's go ahead and start our first one. Yeah, we'll at least do one. So eternality is our first one. So our working definition is that God exists, of course, undiminished infinitely into both the past and the future. He has no beginning or end, his plan for his creation has also eternally existed. So we'll always go slow through the definitions because it's really important um, for us to, to get a good handle on this before we start reading verses that relate to this, okay? Uh, so the first one, the uh, first part of this, obviously God exists, right? Um, God, God is active 
um, God is alive, um, God is working. Um, and another thing that's really important for us to understand, when, when we're talking about godly attributes, we're always going to come from a human frame of mind. So I had you guys do those 10 attributes about yourself. And so we're always going to try to project what we know or we understand onto God. Uh, and that's not the way it works at all. Uh, because of God's word, he projects who he is onto us. So uh, when we get to the second part of this definition, undiminished, that's a little hard for us to understand. There's going to be a lot of things as we go through this study, guys, where it's going to stretch your brain or kind of melt your brain because you're like, whoa, like that doesn't really make sense to me. Um, and that's because God is higher than us. God is smarter than us. Um, God is more powerful than us. So he's reflecting on who he is onto us, even when it's hard for our brains to understand. So undiminished is a little hard for our human brains to understand because as we get older, um, you don't get better. Uh, your body starts to... Um, Go downhill, I think it's probably a, a tactful way to say that. Um, you're not as, as strong or vigorous when you're 60 as you were when you're 20, um, you know, barring extreme circumstances, right? Um, but as we think of, as we get older, we kind of lose ability, you lose strength, you lose focus, you lose memory, and then you kind of degrade to the point where, where you pass on, right? And so when we talk about God existing, um, God does not get older, right? Like God does not lose ability as time goes on as the way we do. And so when we talk about undiminished, that he's not getting worse over time. He's also not getting better over time. He's always been perfect. Um, so there's no change in him. And then we talk about infinitely into both the past and to the future. And so um, obviously our brains can't understand infinity, but it goes before creation and after, you know, the book of Revelation closes, um, God lives and exists infinitely in both directions. So uh, before Genesis 1-1, God existed infinitely before that, right? So God always has, God always will be, um, and that's part of his, his eternality, um, into the past and also into the future. And so that's really important, as we've referenced several times, uh, when God is able to, to give a word, God is able to give a prophecy, um, God is able to say that because he already exists into the future to an infinite degree. And so some of you may be saying like, well, dude, like this, this is a lot, this is, this is heavy. But I think that's important for us to understand that we're talking about God. Um, when, we, when we talk about the nature and the attributes of God, um, it shouldn't just be some little quick like, oh, God lives forever. Yes, that's true. Um, but when you really flesh that out and really start to look at that and understand that, that gives you a lot of awe and reverence. That gives you a lot of respect for God uh, because it's more than just he lives forever. Yes, that's true. But when you start to think about, well, what does that mean? What does that look like? That's where part of this definition comes from. Um, and all the definitions that we're going to be looking at are going to be um, different parts of, of different definitions from different studies that I've looked at and kind of put it in a way that I, makes sense to me. And so I hope it makes sense to you. Um, the second sentence, he has no beginning or end. Uh, so we have a birthday, and then you have a little dash on your tombstone where you lived, and then you have the day that you died. Uh, God does not have that. God has always existed. God always will exist. And so um, he never has a beginning or an end. Um, his, and this is really important when we talk about the implications for that. We talk about an attribute, and then we talk about implications, um, that his plan for his creation has also existed eternally. So there's a lot of bad theology out there that says, hey, um, you know, God made a plan. And then when humanity messed it up, he said, oh man, what am I going to do? Let me do something different. Let me create something new. Um, and that's not biblically true. Um, God has always had his plan for his creation. And so that's going to make a lot more sense um, when we get to talking about that he's had infinite, that he has infinite knowledge. And so when we combine him living forever with having infinite knowledge, that means he knows everything past, present, and future. And so when we, when we talk about um, God existing infinitely both to the past and the future, um, God kind of lives outside of, of time. And so we're, we're going to look at some diagrams later on. Uh, we're going to talk about that. But um, God is not subject to time as we know it. You know, like you have a day and there's 24 hours and you go to bed, you wake up and it's a new day. Um, God is, is so great and eternal that he's really like beyond that. And so he exists eternally in, in the past the same that he exists presently now is the same he exists in the future all at the same time. And so again, when we talk about our understanding of that, um, you know, we think, okay, I, I used to live or I lived at this house. I grew up in my parents' house here. 
but now I live in this apartment or in this house, and in the future I might live in a different house or in a nursing home or with, with my kids, might take care, whatever it is, right? But we're talking about three separate things. Uh, when we talk about the eternality of God, God exists in all of those places all at the same time. So to kind of melt your brain a little bit, when God gives a, a prophecy to a prophet, when God is sharing you know, a word through the New Testament, God is talking about future stuff to tell that man to share. So think about the book of Revelation, right? So God is sharing with John on the Isle of Patmos what it's going to look like at the end of time. John, John is not there, right? He's not at the end of time. He's, he's on the island. He's alive on whatever day of the week it was that God shared that with him. But God can give him the exact details because God exists in the future, but he also exists presently to share through his Holy Spirit to John. But that's the same God who existed eternally before the very first verse, Genesis 1, 1 of your Bible, right? And so he's in all of those places at the same time. He's not like time warping or anything to go to different places. God exists eternally all across time, even before time started and after time ends, God will exist eternally, right? So let's kind of put some, put some practice to that. And let's look at a few verses um, before we're able to, to move on. So again, this is going to be um, you having your Bible, I'm going to put the addresses on the screen. You're going to have to flip through your Bible. So if you're not real familiar with where these verses are, just pause your video until you find it and then unpause your video and watch it. And so we're going to look at these four verses. There's way more than this that talk about God's eternality. Uh, but these four verses are going to talk about that. So the first one we're going to do, uh, go ahead and get your Bible turning fingers ready. And we're going to go to Exodus three, verse 14. So I'll give a little pause in between while I can find it, right? Because I'm doing it with you. Um, but if you're not there by the time I'm ready to read, pause and then unpause when you're there, okay? Exodus 3.14 says, um, God said to Moses, I am who I am, all in capital letters. This is what you are to say to the Israelites, I am has sent me to you. So this is when Moses is, is having this encounter with God. And he's like, well, who do I tell the Israelites is, is sending me? Because he's giving Moses this really big, um, this really big task, this really big chore. And so when, when God references who he is, he says, I am who I am. And that's because God exists eternally. And so there's no point of reference that defines who God is because he lives eternally past, present, and future, right? So when, when someone would ask you, well, well, who are you? Most of the time we say like, um, what kind of job we have, um, if we're in school, if we're retired, if we have kids, and part of our characteristic or nature or attributes are tied to things that happened in time, right? So you don't say you're a father until you have children, right? Or you don't say um, that you're working if you're already retired because that happened in the past. And so we kind of explain who we are to other people based on things that happened in time because God is outside of that. That's why he says, I am who I am because God is so much greater than any event that's happened in history. God is greater um, than any conversation, any event, any date, anything like that, that God can't convey to Moses who he is through relating to events. And he says, I am who I am. And it's really important because it says, I am in present tense, not I was or I will be, but God says, I am because he exists eternally, past, present, and future. And so again, when you're reading this story and this reading this account in the Bible, it's easy to say like, okay, well, Moses, you know, went up and talked to God and burning bush and he's going to go back and lead his people out. And, and you get this phrase, you know, I am who I am. Okay. That's what he tells the Israelites, but it's way more than that because God is revealing his nature. God is revealing one of his attributes that he's eternal. He says, I am present tense. And so he's saying, I am, you know, the God who created everything. I am the God who's talking to you through this bush. I am the God who's going to split the Red Sea that Moses doesn't even know about yet. I am the God who's going to send my son to save the world from their sin, which hasn't even been mentioned yet, right, chronologically. So when God says, I am who I am, he's exhibiting his eternality, right? So let's do our next couple. Um, let's do one more, and then uh, we'll close out for today. So Psalm 102 is in the middle in your poetry section. And again, if you can't, if you get there before me, awesome. Uh, if it takes you a little longer, pause. 
No problem with that at all. Okay, so we're reading Psalm 102, verse 12. It says, But you, O Lord, sit enthroned forever. You renowned, your renown endures through all generations. And so if you've been following along with this um, in the Hebrew study, uh, talking about how Jesus is the high priest that doesn't die or have to pass on his mantle to someone else, that he lives forever, um, that, that's also reference to God's eternality. But when the psalmist is talking here in verse 12, he says, you sit enthroned forever. So again, not, hey, you weren't enthroned and now you are. And from this point on, you will be. He's saying you sit enthroned forever. So God has always been on the throne um, and his renowned endures through all generations. So it doesn't say just this generation. It doesn't say just from this generation moving forward. He's saying through all generations and even before there was man or creation at all, God's renown endures forever. So um, that gets us just about out of time. So we're going to go ahead and close out. We'll start right back here uh, next time and we'll hit that Hebrews verse and then talk about Revelation. Um, I hope that this is helpful to you. Again, it may seem like a lot, especially if you're not used to a lot of um, topical Bible study. Um, but I just, I encourage you to stick with it because when, when you understand these things individually, and then you start to put them together as part of your puzzle to understand who God really is. Um, there we go. When you start to get that viewpoint of God and you start to connect the dots, you connect the pieces, um, that gives you a, a, a more biblically accurate and a healthier view of who God is. Um, and then that will in turn help you and me as we walk out our Christian life um, today, even in these strange times, right? So let's go ahead and go to the Lord in prayer, and then we'll close up our episode for today. I want to thank you for joining me. Um, I, I'm really excited about this because I think this is a really important thing for us to know as Christians. So uh, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Uh, Father, we thank you for your word, and we thank you for who you are. Father, help us to understand more about you. Um, you're so much better than us. You're so much higher than us, Lord. We can never fully understand you, but you are knowable, like we're going to talk about later on. Um, and so, God, help us by the power of your spirit to understand who you are, Lord, and what you have done for us, God, and what you've empowered us to do uh, because of our salvation through Jesus. And so, Lord, as we, as we talk about these things mentally, Lord, and we, we connect the dots with your word, and then we connect the dots with how we view you, how we view ourselves, and how we view the world around us, Lord, help us to live for you confidently, Lord, um, that we know why we do the things that we do. We know why we believe the things that we believe, Lord. And help us just to understand your glory and your greatness, God, so we can live a life that honors you. Father, Lord, we thank you and we love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, everybody. Uh, good work. And so we'll pick up with that next time. And I will see you next episode.